Welcome back to another video. This video is about hyperglycemic crisis which includes diabetic ketoacidosis and hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state. Hyperglycemic crisis is one of the common emergencies seen in a diabetic patient. It can be of three types PKA or diabetic ketoacidosis, HHS or hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state and mixed state. We will be discussing DKA and HHS in this video. DKA or diabetic ketoacidosis results from absolute or relative deficiency of insulin resulting in raised blood glucose which in turn results in osmotic diuresis and loss of sodium and water in urine. The patient presents with hypotension and shock which leads to over overwhelming of the normal compensatory mechanisms. Also here, insulin mediated glucose uptake is impaired and also due to reduced fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, gluconeogenesis occurs in place of glycolysis. As cells fail to get glucose, there is further increase in counter-regulatory hormones like glucagon contributing to hyperglycemia. In DKA, due to absence of insulin, the homosensitive lipase is increased which results in lipolysis and produces free fatty acids. Further these free fatty acids are converted to ketone bodies in liver and these ketone bodies are beta hydroxy butyrate which is further converted to acetone and acetoacetate. These ketone bodies are excreted in urine. DKA is commonly seen in younger patients with diabetes mellitus which develops over a course of three days. In these patients blood glucose levels are raised but not as high as seen in HHS. Some patients also present as euglycemic DKA with just ketone body excretion in urine. Moving on to HHS or hyperosmolar hyperglycemic crisis which is usually seen in elderly patient with diabetes mellitus and it's due to inadequate insulin along with new onset illness or dehydration. It usually develops over a period of a week and presents with raised blood osmolality but ketonuria is absent in HHS that is one of the main difference between HHS and DKA. Coming to causes just like how I explained before, infection, infarction and insufficient insulin contribute to hyperglycemic crisis. Clinically, patient presents with acute brain abdomen, which is associated with uncontrolled nausea and vomiting. Patient also presents with a pathognomic breathing called as Kusman's breathing, which is hyperventilation with rapid deep breaths, which is pathognomic of diabetic ketoacidosis. Due to dehydration, there is increased heart rate, falling BP and posterior hypertension. Next we come to diagnosis and investigations. The main investigation for diagnosis is detection of ketone bodies in urine and ABG detecting metabolic acidosis and then Kusman's breathing. Other investigations include ECG for detecting uh, hypokalemia or hyperkalemia and blood electrolytes and CBC. Next we'll come to the management of DKA which I'll try to explain in detail. Once DKA has been diagnosed, insert peripheral lines bilaterally and catheterize patient to monitor the urine output. To start with, give 500 ml NS normal saline on both line 1 and line 2, which has to be given over 30 minutes. Next, I'll talk about line peripheral line 1, where you continue to give normal saline 2 liters over 2 hours. Uh, that's what I've mentioned here. It's 0.5 and 2 liters, so 2.5 liters over 2.5 hours. 
following which give 3 liters of NS over 6 hours following that give 3 liters of half normal saline or 5% extras over 12 hours so NS is changed into half NS or 5D when blood glucose level comes down to 200 mg per deciliter simultaneously on peripheral line 2 following 0.5 uh, liters of NS over 30 minutes will give 0.1 units per kg of regular insulin IV stat this can be close to 60 units to 70 units of insulin which has to be given as IV stat after this we will give insulin infusion first 5 units of insulin per hour then you change it to 3 units then you change it to 1 unit per hour so for 5 units of insulin we give 25 units of insulin in 500 ml of NS given over 5 hours following which 15 units of insulin in 500 ml of NS over 5 hours and lastly 5 units of insulin in 500 ml of NS over 5 hours this in uh, this last set of infusion has to be coincided with subcutaneous insulin some other points that you have to look into for every 1 liter of NS give 10 ml of KCL which is equivalent to 1 ampule unless initial potassium level is greater than 5.5 mL per liter and keep monitoring ECG for potassium levels once the blood glucose level comes down less than 200 mg per deciliter we we'll change NS to half NS or 5% extras and then overlap 5 units insulin infusion with subcutaneous insulin bicarbonate replacement uh, is usually not given it's given only if the pH is less than 7.1 next we'll move on to the treatment of SHS here the main line of treatment is fluid correction just to correct the dehydration we we'll start with 2 liters of half normal saline given over 2 hours and then repeat half normal saline 1 liter over 2 hours following which if the blood glucose level does not come down then you can further administer low dose insulin and also correct electrolyte levels so that ends the treatment part for DKA and SHS this is a picture of a KCL ampule where each ampule contains 10 ml of KCL and every ml of KCL contains 2 ml equivalents of potassium chloride so for every 10 ml there are 20 ml equivalents potassium so next is image of normal saline 0.9% normal saline and half normal saline or 0.45% of normal saline so this is isotonic while this is hypotonic sodium 77 milli equivalents per liter chloride 77 milli equivalents per liter osmolarity of 154 milli osmol per liter here the osmolarity is 308 milli osmos per liter lastly uh, this image of regular human insulin so that's it about hyperglycemic crisis. Uh, I hope you find this video useful. Thank you.